let's take a look at how you can give feedback digitally. So I'm in Schoology right now and I'm going to use this first example which is actually a discussion to show you how you could use the audio or video recorder that's built right into Schoology in order to give some feedback. And this audio video recorder it can be found in many many different things in Schoology I'm just using this discussion as an example. So I had a discussion question and Leonardo responded and added an image. I can reply and you'll probably find that this box looks pretty familiar to you. This is the audio video recording tool. If you've used this in the past and found it to be very clunky, please try it again. Schoology used to have a flash based audio video recorder and now it is been updated and it really works very nicely and you will find this in many things including assignments. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and you have two choices audio only or audio and video and that will record you from your webcam. I'm going to choose audio today and it's just as easy as clicking the start recording button and I could give some feedback to Leonardo about what he wrote and the picture that he added to his discussion response. You can play that back as clicking the start recording button to make sure that your audio is crisp and clear and loud enough. And when I'm finished, I just insert the recording and it shows right here just like that. It does require that I do some typing in here in order to be able to post the reply. And so it's just as easy as that. You might notice that you have something like this, and this also happens with WebM videos. If you have any that record like that, this file is currently being converted into a viewable format. It should be ready shortly. So they do want to um, wait for that. Then you can just click on the file and listen to it. All right, let's take a look at another example. And I'm going to use this one. Now this is actually an assignment that has a Word document attached. And so I can see that Leonardo actually completed the Word document. He downloaded it on his end. He typed in it and then he attached it to this submission. So if I go ahead and click on the needs grading. This opens up and this is kind of Schoology's grading tool. Um, one way that you can do some annotating and commenting. So again, this is a Word document. So that would be the high school students. And what you do have available up here is I do have a highlight text, so I could do some highlighting. And then it points out that I did some highlighting. And then maybe with that, I'm going to add a note. And so I'm gonna add a note right over here and make some comments about whatever it is I was highlighting. So you do have that option, and I'm just going to type something here so you can see what that looks like, and you have this little comment icon. Now I'm still in the comment tool. I can see that because I have the plus sign. To get out of it, I need to come back to the hand. And so if I needed to grab the comment and move that, I could double click and move the comment and place it where I wanted. I could edit or delete the note from here as well. So I'm done with that. Another option you do have is strike through. So I could strike through all that. Again, if I actually wanted to make a comment about that, I would need to go up, up to the note tool and add a note down here and comment right beside it. I also have a draw tool. So if I w did want to do some circling or some make, you know, starring a certain part, <laughs> that's not very good. Um, I can go ahead and do that. Once I click on style, I have some options to change color to make it more visible. And I like to maybe change the size to make that a little thicker so that's more noticeable to the student. And then click done. So those are your grading tools that are kind of available, your annotating tools available right inside of Schoology. Just know that your comments and your drawings do show on the student end when it's returned. Um, but if they would go to print it or download it, the comments are not there. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and give a 15 on that for Leonardo 
And we can look at that on his side. So that was this document right there that was submitted. If I go ahead and click on his version, there you see all my notes and my annotations are there. One other thing I would like to point out, so let me go back to my class, is right over here if I wanted to give him an audio or video comment, I could use the audio video tool to give feedback when I'm actually looking at his assignment in Schoology. Okay, so I'm going to click out of that. Another new option you might be interested in is Kami. Kami works with PDFs and is now available inside of Schoology for us to use. So that's another option that you might uh, like where you can do some annotating and do some commenting back. What if I'm using a Google Doc or a Google Slide? This actually also works with sheets and drawings. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Shape Sorter activity. And I assigned this using the Google Drive Assignment app inside of Schoology, which makes a copy for each student and automatically does that sharing, linking, and automatically puts it in a folder for me. No need for students to email you their submission. So I can view in progress and I can also view submissions. And so right now, with this activity, Leonardo has actually submitted it. And you can do this right inside of Schoology. You can use the comment feature. So if I'm going to give some feedback on this, the comment button looks just like this. And I can go ahead and open that and comment. And so I say, so I give him a comment there, and that's going to show up. So let's take a look at what that looks like for him. Go into the shape sorter. One nice thing about that feature is you can do that while the student is working. You can do it in live time. So if that's something that's happening over time, you can give some feedback along the way. This one happens to be something that's been submitted. And you'll see on his end right there, he sees my comment. But you can also do it while the work is in progress, so it's more of a learning experience and back and forth conversation as opposed to a final grade at the end. Now on the student side, he can go and say, oh yeah, whoops, I missed one, and he can go ahead and move that. But one thing I was reading about when I was looking more deeply into effective feedback was the fact uh, that a lot of teachers don't make time for the step that the student actually responds to the feedback. Maybe you've taken time to diligently put a lot of feedback on students' papers, and you notice when you pass it back, they kind of glance at it, look at the score at the top, and then tuck it away. So they didn't learn anything from your feedback at all. So one thing that was suggested is that you try to build in times where they actually have to respond to your feedback in some way. And so on the student end, remember I'm at Leonardo, if I click inside there, I can go ahead and reply to the feedback. So how you might want to do that to make it more effective in your subject matter is going to be up to you, but having them respond and in, in reply to that feedback is actually a really good, important part of the learning process. All right, so I'm going to go back to the teacher view, and we are going to go ahead and look at another example. So I'm going to go back here and go on to my final example. Again, this was done with the Google Drive assignment app. This is Leonardo in progress. So again, I could give him some feedback now while he's still writing instead of waiting to the very end. I could use the comment tool right here and do just like what we did before. But another option that I could use is Google Keep. And I think using Google Keep actually kind of really ramps up what you can do with the feedback that you give students. So in order to use Google Keep with a Google product, and again, this works with docs, slides, sheets, and drawings, is from Schoology, I'm going to click this Open button. And my Schoology assignment is still right here, so I haven't lost anything. I've just opened up Leonardo's response, and once I'm in here, 
you can see over here on the right hand side you have a Google Keep icon and I can open up Google Keep right from the side and access my comments. So let's go back and see what that actually means in Google Keep if you've never used that before. So you can go ahead and open a new tab and it's keep.google.com I think people also told me they saw it here in their Google Apps, the waffle icon. You can take all kinds of notes. I leave all kinds of notes for myself. You can add images, you can add videos, you can add links, and you can organize them any way you want. I'm just going to focus today on how you would use this to have a stored comment bank for yourself that you could pull in to any Google product and access easily. So just keep in mind, while this is more of a writing example, you could totally set these up to be whatever you need in your subject area. Some ideas for how you might get the topics that you're going to use might be your state standards. Those could be rubrics that you're already using. Those would be great things to like kind of create topics for. I actually like to do new list. Maybe I'll have a new topic called punctuation. And then inside, I might have proper nouns need to be capitalized. If I click return, I can add another item for punctuation. I can rearrange these by clicking and holding on these little dot icons, and I can put them in any order I want. You can color code these. So I was making all of my comments notes turquoise. That's just something that might help grab your eye when you're looking for things. Another thing that you want to do is click more, three dots for more, and add a label. This really keeps them organized inside and allows you to search for them, and I'll show you where that would be beneficial. And so you can make a new label right then and there, or you can pick a a label that you already have. So I'm going to go ahead and pick comments. One thing that would make this really more powerful is if I put a link to a resource that students could use that would help them with this mistake. So instead of just saying what the mistake was, I actually developed over time a list of resources. This could be a YouTube video. This could be a link to a video you've created that's stored in either YouTube or Google Drive. This could be a text resource that you have stored in Google Drive. That's the power of using Google Keep for feedback is that I can add all those things and easily access them whenever I need them. So I actually have a YouTube video link stored up here. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and right there it is. So when I give the student this comment, they're going to have a resource that will explain that better because either they forgot or they don't understand and the don't understand could be addressed with the resource that you provide. So I'm going to go ahead and close and I'm ready to go. So now I have a bunch of different comments organized by topic that I can use when I give feedback to Leonardo. So I'm going to scoot back over to his document and remember I clicked that arrow that would pop it out and make it large. That way I could click on keep and find my note on the side. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this area and I see he's got some contraction issues and I see he also has um, a problem with there, there, and there. So I know I have something about there, there, and there. So I'm going to click the add comments. You can highlight that. Command C copy. Command V paste and comment that way. One thing that might be helpful is if you get a lot of Google Keep notes is to be able to search. Right now all my comment notes are at the top and showing first because I did those most recently but what if my comments were mixed in way down here? So I don't want to have to scroll through there so one of the benefits of adding the label is that I can search by comments which is what I called all of these that I'm going to use for feedback and then that puts them all to the front, and, and it does include anything else that has the word comments in it. 
So if comments is something you feel you would have in a lot of other Google Keep notes, you could choose different wording. So hopefully you see the value in creating a set of comments in a comment bank in Google Keep and being able to use those effectively with your students. Again, one other thing would be to have the student on their end actually responding to your feedback so that it actually becomes a little more powerful in the learning process. As usual, if you have any questions or comments or need any help, please let me know.